guys welcome back to the channel if you could see this whole setup you would be laughing i have something we haven't done in a very 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 long time for y'all and that is an unhaul i have not unhauled books for you guys in a really long time i also have a haul for you at some point because i've gone to too many library book sales i've ordered books i've gotten so many arcs for 2022 especially in january that i need to show you guys but that'll come probably closer to December. But let's unhaul some books. I love unhauls. I know people love unhauls. I have one unhaul on this channel and it actually does really well to this day and it's super old. So let's just jump into it. There's all kinds of books in here. There's like random ass books from school and by school I mean college like 15 years ago. There are random books from childhood. There are random books that I just had around. There are duplicates of books I have. Random arcs I never, I either have a finished copy of or I might not read or I've read and I'm like, I don't need to keep this. So let's just, this is going to be rapid fire. I'm not going to really go into a lot of detail about these books because why would I? Uh, I'll say right here on the top, at uh, the top, just, you know, if you enjoy unhauls, if you enjoy hauls, if you enjoy just general bookish chatter, give this video a like. Remember to subscribe if that is something you're called to do. I appreciate you all being here. I love building this tiny little community of people that love books. Um, I have a podcast. There's a link down below if you'd like to uh, subscribe to that. I do that with my friend Naomi. We talk about books, about how books impact the world, politics, all kinds of things. We do bookish games. We do all kinds of stuff every week. On Monday, we do post uh, a podcast to wherever you like to listen to podcasts. So enough of the like business. Let's get into the unhaul. I guess right at the top I should say you guys are going to be like, what are you going to do with all these books? So most of these books are going to go to McKay's. I'm going to go visit Naomi, my podcast co-host, and I'm going to give these books to McKay's so they can be resold if they so choose. And then I will buy more books because I am the ultimate book thrifter. This is what we do. Naomi and I thrift books together. But um, anywho, that is the Thing. There may be a few books going to people, but in general, the majority of these books are going to be resold to McKay's so that I can get new books and that somebody else can love these. So right off the top, I'm just going to pull this out. This is The Angel of Darkness by Caleb Carr. He wrote The Alienist. I'm getting rid of this because I accidentally, accidentally, I accidentally bought a hard copy duplicate because I didn't know that I still had this. And I found this when I brought home a bunch of books from my mom's house from you know, when I lived there. Yeah, so I found this in those boxes and I don't need it now because I have I have a hard copy. If you like more intricate literary kind of thriller, historical thrillers, uh, I would suggest Caleb Carr. It is not going to be like fast paced, but if you want like minutia about, you know, like old New York, a lot of things are set there. That's, um, that's a good one. I have a few textbook things from school. I did a lot of Eastern religions work. So this is a, 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 a translation of the Bhagavad Gita. And then this is just an introduction to Buddha and his teachings. So those, uh, hopefully somebody can find good use in. I have a treasury of best love poems, which is fine, which normally I would keep my poetry, but this one, like, I don't know. It just doesn't spark joy, so I'm getting I'm getting rid of it. Uh, this is from when I thought I was, you know, some sort of, I don't know, beatnik. Uh, this is just a collection of random poems, thoughts, verse, etc. from Jack Kerouac. And I mean, I, I guess it's, I guess it's cool. I don't know. It's, this is, I, not my life anymore. So I'm a, I'm a jaded adult now. I'm not a, whatever a beatnik is. I'm still confused about whether or not I want to get rid of this. This is something my mom found for Jesus and Jesus wants to get rid of it because he loves Egypt. And this is, I guess, more about this lady, um, Elizabeth, the, 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 Amelia Peabody and, and some mystery series that's sort of set in ancient Egypt. Um, well, not in ancient Egypt, but like in Victorian, she's like a Victorian sleuth slash amateur archaeologist and it's set a lot in Egypt so I don't know I kind of might keep this so this is actually gonna go in a maybe pile I have a random book about running because I used to be a runner and now I'm just fluffy I don't think I'm ever gonna get to this Sabrina Sabina Khan and this is the love and lies of Raksh, Raksh, Rakana 
Ali, Rock, Ruxana Ali, Ruxana Ali, and it is queer and it is Muslim, and I just don't think I'm ever going to get to it, so I think I'm going to pass it on and have somebody else read it. And her other book might be here too in the pile that I have because I read it and I and I really did like it. I just I think they would be better served being put back into circulation and having a younger person read these and um, have an impact their life. I, you know, I'm an old lady. I, I loved them, but like somebody else can read them now. Uh, I have Charlotte Gray by Sebastian Fox, which is a historical fiction that I was going to read for a reading blog and I just could not get into it. So I'm going to put that back into circulation. Somebody else might like this. I have had this book forever and part of me still thinks about keeping it just because it's like a graphic novel that talks about genetics. Um, you know, if you, I have a bachelor's in biology. I also have a bachelor's in nursing and, uh, you know, I, science, science is my brain. Like that's the way my brain works, math and science. So I am the STEM kid who also reads books. And this is just an introduction to genetics that I've had since I was very, very, very little. And I guess that's going to go in my baby pile too. But uh, I have a hard copy of this. This is an arc of a Better to Have Gone, Love, Death, and the Quest for Utopia in Arrowville, which is a memoir, nonfiction about a cult, essentially. And I will get to this at some point, but I, I don't need the arc, so I will pass that on to another home. Here are some other books on running. I don't run like I used to, so I, I don't need books on running. I don't even know where this came from. This is a, a politically correct bedtime stories and modern tales for our life and times. I don't, I literally don't even know where this came from. I just found it in a box of books and I don't need it. So it's going to go away. I have a few random uh, thrillers. I almost called these fantasies. These are not fantasies. Thrillers that came in. I want to give away with a stack of books. There were a couple books that I wanted and some other books that came along with it. I'm probably never going to read these. So again, I'm going to put those back into circulation and let somebody else read and love them. If you've ever heard me talk about Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis, you know why this is going away. I hate this book. If you are ever on a date with a human being or you meet a new human being and they tell you that this is their favorite book, run. Just run. That is all. I read this in my Read Like Lacey challenge when uh, I was reading 50 books in a month and this is Jerusalem 1913. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's looking at just at the beginning of like the Israeli state and it's definitely an interesting read. I don't really feel compelled to keep it because it's just so biased because of the author who's writing it. And I, and I just don't think I got like, I, I, would, I, would, I would like more books on Isra Israel and Palestine, but not that book in my collection because I feel like it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't do what I wanted to do. That's the best thing I can say. Uh, I have this book by Amy Myers, The Imperfects, which I do encourage you guys to, if you like sort of historical fiction with a little bit of mystery and family drama, this is a really good book. Um, I'm just never going to read it again, so I'm going to get rid of that one. I have a couple like random books that, you know, like people give you for things. I have this book of men and dogs, which the men are beautiful. This was a birthday book that some friends gave me. Oh, let's, let's, find, let's find a beautiful man and his beautiful dog. Oh, because you can't say, look at that poor doll. Well, like, that's the whole book. I, 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 I don't know if I need this in my life. So, a long time ago for a birthday, I got this book, Damn You Autocorrect, which is hilarious. It used to, I used to live in my bathroom in an old apartment of mine, um, you know, for guests to thumb through. Maybe I should wash my hands after that. Anyway, this might make some people angry, but I'm getting rid of a girl's guy to murder. I've never continued on with this series. I did enjoy it. I just don't feel like I need to keep it. And again, I feel like people, someone will love that. So it's gonna, it's gonna go back into the world. I did not like City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. It was fine. It just, again, like I, I don't feel compelled to keep it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might keep this one and give it a shot before I get rid of it. This is Dragonfly Girl. It's a YA sort of sci-fi. It talks a little bit about cheating death and it's sciency and nerdy and you know now that I'm looking at it again maybe I'll, maybe I'll give this like a first chapter try. That's another video I'm thinking of filming 
where I go through some of these books and I try out like the first couple chapters of some books I have some maybes on and I make the ultimate decision of whether or not to keep it. I have a hard copy of Controlling Women, uh, What We Must Do Now to Save Reproductive Freedom, which is an interesting book when you talk about everything that's been going on with uh, Texas here in the States, but uh, I haven't gotten to it. I have not, I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, I have a lot of books. I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's definitely on the list, so I'm keeping the hard copy, and hopefully I can find a home for that. I have this random ass book, The Medical Case Book of Adolf Hitler. I don't need to read it. I know enough about all the drugs that he was on. Jesus is getting rid of Jackdaws by Ken Follett because we found a beautiful hard copy edition of this so somebody can enjoy the paperback. The same thing is going to happen with We Keep the Dead Close. I've actually read this. This was a feminist book club pick for October, I believe. I do encourage you to read this. It talks a lot about women in, in higher education and in uh, like prestigious academia. Um, this is about a murder case. It's it's really good. I have, I have this in hard copy so I'm going to pass along the uh, paperback to somebody who also wants to read it. I have uh, something that's probably going to upset some people and I apologize but it wasn't for me and you know what can you do. I think I have a couple books in here that are probably going to piss some people off and like there's really not much I can do about that. We had the ones we're meant to find as a TBR Lowdown book club pick. And as beautiful as this book is, as much as I wanted to love it, I uh, was it for me. There was a lot in here that I think was good in terms of its attempt, but I, there was it was confusing. It was very confusing for me. I just didn't under. I just I'm gonna pass this along. I know that there are a lot of people that l absolutely adore this book, so somebody hopefully will get this book and love it and have a much better relationship with it than I do. Because uh, right now I see it and it makes me. Angry. I have a couple copies of Eleanor in the Village. I have like two, I had two finished copies. I had an arc of it. Like Scribner just kept sending me this book and I don't really know, I don't really know why. It's literally just about Eleanor Roosevelt in this period of time where she lived in Greenwich Village. And I do want to read it. It's super short, but like I don't need three copies of it. So I got rid of that. Um, this is an indie published book that I read the first one and the audiobook is actually at least for the first one is narrated by Murphy Napier and it wasn't bad. This is on Luna Time by Amber Crawley and there's a second book in Light of Luna. It's like a time travel mother daughter story uh, but I there were just a couple like continuity issues that just didn't work for me. Uh, I don't always do the best with time travel because of that and so I don't know, I'm just gonna get rid of these and hopefully somebody else will love them. Speaking of time travel issues and somebody who just it's, tries to make sure that every potential thing is ever dealt with, I'm getting rid of my copy of 112263. If you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me attempting to read this, I just, Stephen King is not my author. I've given him three shots, he is not my author. I've done three different kinds of books. I do, we do not get, we, we don't, we don't mix. I was very frustrated throughout the reading of it. I don't like the way he describes characters. I don't, I just, enough. Alyssa, I'm not talking about it anymore. Same with his son. Obviously, I'm getting rid of Nosferatu because this was, if you if you missed the reading vlog, which I'll post somewhere, this was a horrendous experience for me and I, it needs to exit my life. I kind of hate that I'm getting rid of this, but I'm never going to read it. And plus, this is, oh, and how, who got this dirty? Remind me while I clean my book with my spit. I feel like a mother. Send me their souls. Entangled sent me this, or I was doing a book tour for this. But this is like the final book in a trilogy, and I, I, I don't have any of the other books, so I'm never going to read it. So maybe somebody wants this, and like I'm kind of shying away from a lot of YA because uh, it's so hit or miss for me, and so like I'm being a lot more picky with it because of that, but. So this one's going. Uh, I, do, I don't think I need to explain why I'm getting rid of Casual Vacancy. Never read it, and that's that. I have a bunch of random poetry books that I, by Sharon Olds. Are they all Sharon Olds? So two of these are Sharon Olds. I read them, they're fine, but I don't feel compelled to keep them. And I also have this James Salter, Dusk and Other Stories, which I think I'm just gonna get rid of. Um, cause I don't know, I've never gotten to it. I have another TBR Leon pick that I am getting rid of and that's Witches Steeped in Gold. 
just because, again, like, I really wanted to read this. I really wanted to like this, but there was a, there was something missing for me. And we talked about this with Shelby and the bookstore when we interviewed her on the podcast. And, and I think she's right. There's, I think it's, 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 it's a YA thing. There, I just, I don't know if I connect with a lot of YA fantasy anymore. And that's, that's, so I'm going to pass this along to somebody who is going to love it because there was a lot to love in there and it just didn't connect for me. Uh, this is the other Sabine Khan that I'm going to get rid of. This was a fantastic book and I want to pass it along to a young person who is going to be impacted very positively with, by that. Um, this is John Leguizamo's Freak, which I read a long time ago. If you've never seen that one man show, uh, I highly suggest it. This is freaking hilarious, but I'm never going to read it again. So I read it. Uh, some more random books from my life as a Eastern religions whatever it was, um, The Elements of Zen, um, uh, the, uh, Tao Te Ching, that's gone, I, I'm not reading these anymore, uh, Herman has these Damien, like I, this goes back with the Jack Kerouac, I don't know, what, ooh that rug, I don't, I don't know what I thought I was, um, uh, The Essential Tao, uh, I don't study religions anymore, um, Treasure Island, because I have a much nicer copy of Treasure Island. Uh, Knock em Stiff, which we've talked about on the podcast. I did not like this book. It's well written. I just didn't enjoy anything about the actual stories. So I have to, I just, I'm getting rid of it. I have this memoir, Miseducated, Miseducated by Brandon Fleming, which is about this man, Brandon, living in an abusive home and going, eventually becoming a, uh, I think he's a professor at Harvard, or he works at Harvard. Anyway, so he's, he's, a, he's an incredible journey. I have a hard copy of this, so I'm gonna pass that copy along to somebody else. I have two copies of When No One Is Watching because my mom gave me one and she didn't actually even like this book. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, that's a whole different discussion that's not for the internet. Yeah, so I'm gonna give a copy away to somebody else. I have a copy for me and that makes me happy. I have, I think, both the art and the, um, hard copy of the library of the dead because this was again a tv or lowdown book i just ended up not really vibing with this one so i mean it was fine but it was written a little it was a little juvenile for me so i'm gonna get rid of that i'm gonna pass along the queens of innis lear which is a very female driven retelling of king lear which is interesting but this book was a slog to get through it was very nice i mean I know that people will say that about Shakespeare, but let me tell you shit, but King Lear is much more exciting than the way that is written. Uh, I have uh, two copies of Edward Rutherford's London, so I'm going to get rid of this paperback trade paperback when I have a hard copy of it. It's a historical fiction about sort of like the history of London. I have Sherry Le Pena's A Stranger in the House. It was fine. I wasn't really... It's like a nothing thriller to me. I don't need to keep it. I have... Two copies of Middlemarch, so I'm getting rid of the paperback. I have two copies of the Marvelous Miss Mira Girls, Mirza Girls. I'm, I, again, why I'm probably never going to read these. These were from a book tour, so I'm going to get rid of those and send them to somebody who will love them. I had two copies of Turtle in Paradise. I kept one, and I'm going to give away the other. This is a graphic novel, which sounds lovely. I have this random book from Parliament House Press. This Will Kill That by Daniel K. Rao. Daniel K. Rao. It's really pretty. I mean, it even has like a glitter. It's signed. It has a glitter cover. But I'm just, I'm never going to read it. So hopefully somebody will love that. I'm getting really fast because I want to outpace my battery dying. <laughs> I have captured the crown. This is a gargoyle queen novel. Uh, I think this came, yeah, this came in an unplugged box. I keep all of my things inside when they come in unplugged. I'm just probably never going to read this. Again, it's another white fantasy. Like I'm kind of getting pickier with those. I did not like Nine Perfect Strangers, so this is going. I think my mom liked it, I didn't. The Punishment She Desire, Deserves, I'm sorry, from Elizabeth George. Again, this is a mystery series that I have two copies of because I probably got one for my mom and one for me. Uh, I have this, this was for a, a reading vlog that never really uh, came to fruition, and this is uh, Hilary Belloc's Cautionary Verses. These are like children's stories from sort of the turn of the century. They're English. They are incredibly colonialist and just really fucked up. And I don't need to keep them in my life. I finally decided that I'm going to get rid of Jane Anonymous. I, my last time I did a unhaul for you guys, I 
had decided to keep it, but I think I'm going to pass it along because this book is really good and we're not going to reread it, but I think somebody else will really love it. Three of the the other Bowling Girl books here I, that I'm going to get rid of because I by Philippa Gregory because I'm never going to read these. I've had these for years, like years, absolute years, and um, it's time for them to go. Uh, I have this random The Widow of the South that I picked up at Savers, and I don't know I don't know why. I think I was going to try to do some sort of like weird antebellum reading vlog, and it just never really came together. Um, so I'm getting rid of it. I have a signed copy of Midnight Sun, which I'm never going to read. And I don't even have my Twilight copies anymore, so this is going. I have two different Marquis de Sade <laughs> readers. Um, this Philosophy of the Boudoir and uh, some poems and things he wrote. Why? I don't know. Oh, we're nearing the end. Turbo, my may he rest in peace, ate the guest jacket of the lies we told by Camilla Way. This was um, a good fantasy, if I have to say a fantasy, a good thriller about a kid who's kind of a psychopath as a child, but I never need to really read it again. I don't really read a lot of my thrillers again, so I'm going to pass that one along. Winter's Bone. This was good. This is one of Jennifer Lawrence's first movies. I think she won some awards for it. Uh, I'm just never going to read it again, so I'm going to pass it along to somebody who will also enjoy it. Uh, this is Blood and Honor, which is now has a new title. A lot of people like this indie fantasy fay story. It has a new title because this is uh, this is not an appropriate title. Let's just leave it at that. It has connotations and connections to things that are very highly inappropriate. I'm never going to read these. I finally decided I really wanted to read these because I love Cuba. Cuba is one of my favorite places in the entire world. But I'm just never going to get to these. And if I ever do, I'll just get them out of the library. And that's when we left Cuba and next year in Havana. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pass these along to somebody who's going to read them a lot sooner than I am. I randomly picked this up at a bed and breakfast and I've never read it. So I'm just going to pass it on. It's the birth order book. It just somebody trying to make some connection to the way that we are, our families are, we're, where our place in our birth order is and how we interconnect and all of that. I have volume one of two, I don't have volume two of the Brothers Karma, Karamamov um, by uh, Dostoevsky. I have the full set and I accidentally picked up just half of it at the book barn. So I'm just gonna pass it along. Maybe somebody has the other volumes, I don't know. Again, I have an arc of Undoing Drugs, which is a nonfiction book that talks about um, managing drug addiction. And uh, I have I have a hard copy of this. I have a, a finished copy, so I'm gonna pass that along to somebody who's gonna like it. And then finally, I can't believe how quickly I got through this. Finally, I have by Gaslight by Stephen Price, which is this incredibly chunky chunk mystery Victoriana sort of thriller. It's a little bit in the. It's written sort of like Caleb Carr historical this like thrillers are written. But this was unbearable for me in how long it was um, and just how it, it, did, it was doing way too much. I was not enjoying the epic journey. Naomi read this with me. She loved it. I didn't. And so I'm giving my copy away. And that, my friends, is everything that I am unhauling in my next trip to visit Naomi. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything in here that you think I should save from the pile, let me know. But I think I did a pretty good job of holding on to a few things, but getting rid of things that I'm truly never going to read. And I just get stuff in. Every day I get more books in uh, from publishers and from my own things. And it's it, it needs to be, I need to get rid of some stuff, <laughs> essentially. Because these shelves are almost full. I haven't built the other shelves. It's 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 insane. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. I love having you guys here. I will see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Ciao. So just sit with me, talking to the night and to the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think... I think